Hi there and welcome to this Innova UK training video and in this video we will be going over the FTC system without the fuss. So basically we have received quite a lot of questions from you that have been dealing with about the question of what the FTC system actually is or even what a quality management system, system is because I think there is quite a lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions about the whole issue of the FTC system. So before we can go the more detail about what should be included in the FPC system and what must be included in it. It's probably better to go to the basics and really try to understand what it really means. I'll be, in this training I'll be using the word quality management system also, even though the CE marking in itself is not, has nothing to do with quality. So, but I'm just going to use the quality management system in, in this training just to highlight the fact that the FPC system kind of like relates to the quality management system and it has similar features in it. So uh, just, to, just to highlight that thing here. But every company, company, no matter how big or small, even one person, micro companies to all the way to the multinationals, has some sort of quality management system. Uh, it can be thought that the quality management, management system includes all activities that in one way or another are related to the quality that the, our customer experiences. So quality management system includes all those different tasks, like how you answer the phone or how you bill your customers, uh, how marketing is done, what kind of marketing materials you are having, and how you design new marketing materials, how different products are designed, what kind of raw materials you use how information is passed between different manufacturing stages, like if you have some changes, how the changes are communicated. All those are part of the quality management system that you have in place. It, of course, they can be good ways of performing each and every task and they can be bad ways of performing. Let's say that we have a two, two employee company. It can be that both of the employees take care of the answering the phone differently. So you basically have two different ways of performing the answering the phone, but it still doesn't mean that you, are, you don't have a quality management system. It just means that you have maybe a little bit weak quality management system, but you still have the system in place, even though you don't necessarily know that you do. And sometimes it might be beneficial to standardize how certain tasks are performed that relate to the quality that the customer sees or experiences. So for example, there can be some quality documentation that describes how certain tasks should be or must be performed. And if we take an easy example of telemarketing, it is it's quite, quite common that the telemarketers have a written pitch prepared for them. So they are only supposed to read the pitch word by word to the potential customer and not, not try to make any modifications to the pitch. So that's kind of like one way, to, one way of standardizing a task. So you have word by word or step by step instruction prepared for one or more tasks. And naturally this telemarketer case is one example or it's actually one extreme example because you have a word by word instructions that the telemarketer is supposed to follow. But naturally you can have more general Standard, standardized tasks that only list a few key things that must be remembered or that must be performed. So it's kind of like continuum where we have at one end we have really detailed instructions on how to perform everything and these are usually reserved for really low paying and low skill level tasks that they, you just hand them out to the employee and after that they are able to perform the task given at them. And on the other hand, we have kind of like this box place where we have kind of like general instructions on how to perform, the, for example, the whole manufacturing. So we might have here, we have the inspection of raw materials and then we have storage. And we don't go into more details about how to perform each and every task. We just say that they are supposed to be, they are supposed to be performed in this order. So just to recap the previous slides. Each and every company has a quality management system and it includes every single task that in one way or another 
relates to the quality that the ex uh, customer is experiencing. And in some instances, the company may find it beneficial to standardize some of the tasks, so they make a unified way of performing the tasks. The unified way can have be really detailed or it can be quite general, depending on the level of experience and expertise that the employees have and also what the company actually wants to. So even with a highly specialized company and with a really high paying employees with huge experience and expertise, we still can have these step-by-step -step guides and step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform some of the key tasks, just to make sure that every single employee performs the tasks in a certain way. So if we think about the, all the tasks that we were talking about in the first slide, not all of these must be or has to be standardized or documented in order to get the CE marking right. And in fact, the things that you must standardize or document are listed in the CE marking standards or to be most precise in the EN 1092, EN 1091 and EN ISO 38343. And naturally, those things that must be standardized also depend on the standard that you are using. So if we are talking about the CE markings, we have the EN 1091. But if we were talking about doors or aggregates or traffic signs, we would have a different standard that would mandate to the manufacturing to manufacturer to standardize different tasks from here. So the standardization requirements come from the standard itself. So we don't have to develop written procedures and written working instructions for each and every single thing that relates to the quality because that would take forever and it, it's not really related to the CE markings in general. So the standard says which of these pro processes you must standardize and develop a working instructions. So that becomes your FPC system or the quality management system that is used to CE mark a structural steel product. But unfortunately, it's not sufficient if you just document the certain tasks that are mandated by the standard that you are already performing in one way or another. Because there are some new requirements for certain things to take into account. So, for example, we might have the use of welding procedure specifications in the procedure. We have that kind of requirement in the standard. Or we have a requirement for the procedure test for holding and we have a requirement for the calibration of test equipment and so on. So we have all these new, kind of new requirements that most companies, at least in our experience, haven't really paid any, atten any attention to. But they, in the new CE marking world, they must take them into account in their manufacturing. So you must, once you're developing the FPC system, you must include these new things into the, your quality management system and develop procedures and also documentation for these steps. So now we have a kind of like expanded quality management system from the one you had before. And this thing right here must meet the requirements of the EN 1091 to an EN ISO 38343. 